Hello dear students. In this video, we are going to see some examples of rearranging the words or phrases to form them into meaningful sentences. And uh, before we move further, I would like uh, to remind you that so far we have completed the following topics. Literary devices, parts of speech, regular and irregular verbs, forms of verb and the subject verb agreement. And uh, also uh, we have studied tenses. And in the previous video, I explained determinants. So, dear students, you are supposed to write all the topics and their details that uh, we have studied so far in your English notebook, uh, where in the grammar portion part. And this is mandatory for all. And now uh, let's get into our uh, today's study. Dear students, uh, before we start solving the exercises on rearrange, we need to know what is a sentence and what are its types. So please watch this complete video very attentively and patiently. Uh, a sentence. A sentence is a group of words that makes a complete sense. For example, children are playing in the park. Mother is cooking in the kitchen. So these were simple examples of sentence. And now let's see what is a phrase. A phrase is a group of words that makes some sense but not the complete sense. For example, uh, in the park, in the classroom, under the table, uh, into the pool. So uh, these are some of the examples of phrase and all these examples are making some sense but not the complete sense. So uh, we need to add something uh, to these phrases to form them into meaningful sentences. So what to add in, this, uh, in these phrases? Uh, let's take the first example in the park. What to add? Children are playing in the park. And now it becomes a complete sentence. The second example was in the uh, classroom. So what to add in this? We can add students are sitting uh, in the classroom and now it becomes a complete sentence and the next was under the table so what to add with this under the table uh, we can add a cat is hiding under the table and now it becomes a complete sentence the last example was uh, into the pool so what to add in this into the pool uh, we can add a, uh, the, the swimmer or a swimmer jumped into the pool and now it becomes a complete sentence. So uh, these were some of the examples of sentences and the phrases. And now uh, let's see some basic types of sentences. Can you watch this very attentively? Basically, there are four types of sentences. One, declarative sentence. Uh, next, imperative sentence. Please keep writing all these things. Next, interrogative sentence. And then, fourth one is exclamatory sentence. And these are the things that you have been learning from the beginning of your schooling. So what is a declarative sentence? A declarative sentence simply makes a statement or expresses an opinion. Uh, in other words, it makes a declaration. 
And this kind of sentence ends with a period. Examples of uh, this sentence type. These are some of the examples. Uh, I want to be a good dancer. In this uh, sentence, a declaration is made. Next, uh, the next example in this declarative sentence is, uh, My father is really a good singer. In this, uh, in this sentence, an opinion is expressed. And the next verse, imperative sentence. So what is an imperative sentence? An imperative sentence gives a command or makes a request. It usually ends with a period but uh, can under uh, uh, certain circumstances uh, it can end with an exclamatory mark or exclamation point. Examples of this sentence type and please sit down. So it's first type of imperative sentence. I need you to sit down now and after that an exclamatory mark. So it's a second type of imperative sentence. And now the next was interrogative sentence. So what is an interrogative sentence? An interrogative sentence asks a what? Ask a question. Uh, this type of sentence uh, often begins with uh, uh, who, what, where, when, why, how, or do. And it ends with a question mark. Examples of this sentence type. Uh, when are you going to Delhi again? Just a very simple example. Next example. Uh, do you know what the weather will be tomorrow or the next week? And then after that, question mark. And then the next was exclamatory sentence. So what is an exclamatory sentence? Uh, an exclamatory sentence is a sentence that expresses great emotion such as uh, excitement, surprise, happiness and anger and ends with an exclamatory mark or exclamation point. Examples of this sentence type, uh, it is too risky to climb this wall and uh, uh, I got first position in my class and you know what comes after, uh, after this type of sentence, an exclamatory mark. And uh, so dear students, uh, these were some basic types of sentences. And if you want to solve the exercises of rearrange, uh, you need to have a good command on English language. And also you need to have a very good vocabulary. Uh, every day uh, add new words in the dictionary of your mind. Uh, when you learn uh, new words, uh, try to use them in your daily conversation, in day to day talk. And never feel lazy or lethargic when it comes to writing a paragraph or a story or an article or anything. Every day try, uh, try to write uh, something uh, new. Give a balanced time uh, to the English subject also on a daily basis. Give an equal focus on uh, your English subject. Uh, please remember that giving time to English, uh, English subject is also equally important. Always feel enthusiastic to learn something new uh, to improve your uh, English language. Uh, you need to uh, go back and learn the basics of uh, the parts of speech and uh, that is noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction and interjection. Spend a quality time in learning determiners, polish your tenses, practice reported speech that uh, you learned in your uh, previous classes, change of voice, subject verb agreement, uh, spend much time in improving your writing skills. Write as much as you can. And uh, when you practice all these things, you will see a great change in your writing skills 
and you will stop making mistakes. You shall be able to solve all uh, kinds of exercises based on rearrange. Uh, and now I hope that this teaching was really helpful. And now let's see a few examples of rearranging the words or phrases. Dear students, please study them very attentively. These are exercises or questions on rearranging words or phrases. Words written with red ink are the questions or the exercises. And the words written with blue ink are the answers. And I'll read for you first of all the exercises. And then we shall move to the uh, answers part. Uh, the question comes like this. Look at the words and phrases below. Rearrange them to form meaningful sentences. Uh, students, please uh, note that there is a slash after every word in the questions. Uh, so instead of saying the word slash, I'll simply take a pause after every word in the exercises. So let us start reading the exercises. Number A, 1. Success, road, the not is straight to number two of life a person the hurdles overcoming after destination reaches to his Overcoming all. Number three, see the give up we should of life when like mountain never hurdles V. And now let's make them meaningful sentences. Answers. Number one, the blue ink part. Number one, the road to success is not straight. Number two, a person reaches to his destination after overcoming all the hurdles of life number three we should never give up when we see the mountain like hurdles of life i'll read for you once again the answers of a part number one road to success is not straight two a person reaches to his destination after overcoming all the hurdles of life. Number three, we should never give up when we see the mountain like hurdles of life. Now let us move to the second exercise that is B written with red ink. Number one, took to Teresa the families seven grove her olive first was when see father number two the frightened olive her the silvery green number three in the dancers they the sweat and 
in ghostly like wind dark rain number 4 father by ancestors that her those were told their trees planted her so the answers to this exercise 2 are teresa was 7 when her father first took her to see the family's olive grove number 2 the silvery green olive trees frightened her number 3 in the dark they swayed like ghostly dancers in the wind and rain number 4 her father told her that those trees were planted by their ancestors once again i'll read for you number 1 teresa was 7 when her father first took her to see the family's olive grove the silvery green olive trees frightened her number 3 in the dark they swayed like ghostly dancers in the wind and rain number 4 her father told her that those trees were planted by their ancestors